Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's the latest update on Project Mini Fireball. We have the RC conversion done. So check it out. We're running a radio link RC6 and a linear actuator. And I did lay out a system to show you out of the car so you guys can replicate this. This system that's on the table is actually going to be for ba -ba -bum, dung beetle. So there you go. Notice how it self centers? Your cheapo systems don't do that. So that's why we use a linear actuator with a lac board. And um, the throttle. <laughs> Brake is off on that one. So let's go over this, guys. And I will flip this over and show you how we installed the linear actuator. But I can't do that right now because the battery would fall out. So um, the fly sky is telling me that I've left it on with no input. So right now we've got a Life PO4 12 volt battery, super lightweight. So we got that in the front and here's the radio receiver up here. And this right here is a RC relay. So that plugs into channel three. And what that does, because when you're using a 24 volt system, you can't just wire it into the 12 volt linear actuator. So when the radio fires on, it closes this relay, which gives a closed circuit, kind of like a light switch to the linear actuator control board. That is what controls the steering. And your throttle is basically the brushless motors in this setup. So it's basically right here. So we've got a four cell battery with two brushless controllers, guys. So I am going to do a separate video on brushless RC conversion because it's way more complicated than a brush system. Um, brushless syst or a brushed motor system, you can just use one controller that's big enough amperage and run it. So I've already done that in the past. I will put a link to that video right here, um, RC conversion. But brushless is different, guys, because it's got three wires to the um, motor. But um, so you've got your two brushless controllers and then right here we've got a Y system and I will put links to every product that I bought most of them are off of Amazon so you guys can click on that so you've got your controllers but you have to get them into one input to go to channel 2 right okay one to turn two to burn on your uh, receiver so this is a double female in a male Y splitter and then this is a three foot long um, servo extension that plugs into channel two. Channel one goes into your lac board because that's basically your servo and then you can see channel three here is uh, that little um, relay. So channel three goes to the relay which We'll close the circuit for the battery. Right now I've just got a regular lead acid battery. And here is the lac board wiring for the linear actuator. So there is five wires. So you have a negative, positive, and then your three for the potentiometer. And this is the wiring diagram that you guys would go by right there. And I have seen that there's an alternate version. If it's not working right, you swap the blue for the white, the yellow for the blue, and the white for the yellow. There must be two different boards out there. But um, the hardest part of this, guys, because this is pretty much plug and play, once you, you know, wire it up with the fancy little screwdriver that you get, 
The hardest part is mounting the linear actuator and figuring out where to put that. Um, I normally use a four inch throw, so it actually travels two inches on either side of the center and turn back the end point so that you get full steering. This one right here is actually only a two inch. You can see that right there, the Fregelli. Um, but I think from there, I'm gonna flip it up on its side so you guys can actually, well, I can show you some of the action like this. So I've done lots of RC conversions, but I've never done one that's gonna be high speed. And I'm already having regrets that I didn't, when I did the lowering uh, spindle, I didn't kick it back some to add some caster because caster gives you straight line stability. So I might end up grinding that plug weld I did off and uh, kicking that back a little bit. But we'll see, you know, it's all, it's all trial and error. So let me get this battery out and get things secured and I'll flip this up on the side and show you guys how I actually mounted the actuator. All right guys, so here's how the steering is connected. So you can see the tie rod to the spindles, right? That's all stock. I did already convert this to center steering because of the big tubs. This uh, seat is in the center, it's a single seat. So this one turned out pretty basic. So as you can see, it's a piece of flat bar and I welded a nut to it so that it would mount the base of the actuator. And then over here, most spindles um, have this wide plate. So basically this is a like a drag link. So as that pushes, it's gonna kick the back of that um, in and give it steering throw. And if you needed to, you could change the mechanical leverage. Like I could have bolted on another little section to give it more of a, um, like a spindle link. But that's basically it guys. And I did have some good it, um, feedback on the uh, comments. People ask why I didn't use a big servo. So the main reasons is difficulty mounting. So picture this, but in a bigger scale. And I looked into the price guys. These are from like three to $500 for like a big servo. This is the 10th scale servo. So you'd have to have a servo and then you'd have to have some kind of like linkage like in an RC and it's just way more work. This li literally is just like a push, uh, electric push rod. So it was, this was super simple, cheaper, and the builds that I've seen people using these, uh, they ended up breaking um, parts. So linear actuator guys is the way to go, but you have to make sure you guys don't cheap out and get one that's got the five wires. So. Here's a basic actuator, and look at it, guys. Um, buy it from the link in the description on Amazon. Um, you can't get one that just has the negative and positive. It's not gonna know where the arm is in relation to its travel. You cannot use a basic actuator. This right here is for opening like a lid or something like that, and then going back down. Um, this right here, it, it, it needs to know where it is. So that's basically it, guys. Linear actuator RC conversion. Um, so I'm gonna wrap this up right here, but I am going to do a more detailed video on brushless RC conversion because I'm sure that some of this is like, what the heck is going on here? So I'm gonna clean things up and look for that other video if you guys wanna do your kids' brushless RC conversion. Thanks for watching.